Yo, what's up everyone, it's Josh here with another Keep It Techie video. And today we're gonna have a real talk about something that's been bubbling up in the Linux world. But first, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. I basically create content all about Linux, home lab setups, and helping folks break into tech. And I also don't shy away from controversial topics, which we're getting into one today. So here's the deal. There's been some serious drama in the world of Linux graphics stack. I'm talking about X Libre Fork, the Red Hat Purge, and a whole lot of back and forth over X11 versus Wayland. But underneath it all, there's a much deeper debate about whether politics personal views and institutional power should even be a part of open source software. So today I got my thoughts and I'm gonna share them with you guys. So let's get into it. All right, so let me break down what's going on. X Libre is a new fork of the X11 display server. And we're talking about that old school X11 that's been running GUIs on Unix systems since like forever. But this new fork was started by a longtime contributor named Enrique Waget. And I hope I'm not messing up your name, but I'm sorry. And the goal, according to him, is to modernize X11, boost performance, improve security, basically keep it alive as a stable alternative to Wayland. And in my opinion, that's super cool. You know what I'm saying? That's a very awesome thing to do because X11 has been around forever. And as you guys know, I'm a big fan of the XFCE desktop environment. And a lot of those older desktop environments, they still use or require X11 in order to run properly. But anyway, things got messy because alongside all that technical ambition, the project included this bold statement in the readme file. It says, it's explicitly free of any DEI or similar discriminatory policies. And just like that, the open source internet just went crazy. It exploded everywhere. Everybody was talking about it. Now, real quick, let me give you guys my perspective before we go any deeper, because I know you guys have heard me talk about DEI in the past on my channel. I'm someone who strongly believes that DEI plays an important role in our society as a whole, especially when it comes to correcting historical imbalances in the job market. And if you just simply do a little bit of research, you can see that this is still affecting marginalized groups to this day. But anyway, those groups have been left out for generations and it's taken real effort to try and change that. But when it comes to open source, it should be open to everyone, period. That's what I believe. If you've got the skills, if you're willing to contribute, if you're passionate about a project, then it should never matter what your background is. So in my opinion, DEI doesn't belong in open source, not because it's bad, but because it's already supposed to be an open merit base space. I mean, that's the ideal at least. And most of the time, people that contribute to open source projects, they're anonymous. I mean, they have either an alias as their name and an avatar for their picture. You don't even know who's contributing to the code. But if the code is good and it's added to the project via a pull request, then it really doesn't matter. It's all about if the code works or not. But when people start bringing their personal politics into the code base, whether that's anti-DEI statements, corporate purges, or anything in between, we start drifting away from what makes open source great. And to be honest, it starts becoming something different. So why did Ex Libre even become a thing? Well, if you ask Enrique, the founder, I quote, it's because Red Hat and others have allegedly sabotaged progress on the X11 project for years. Now, he also accused them of using the good old embrace, extend, and extinguish strategy to make room for a Wayland which is the new hotness for desktop Linux graphics. Now here's where it gets even wilder. Just a few days after X Libre was announced publicly, and I believe the first person to announce it was the Lunduke Journal. I think I seen him talk about it on Twitter or something like that, but Red Hat employees deleted Enrique's GitLab repo. They also closed all his merge requests and straight up blocked his account on freedesktop.org. Now that's not speculation. The receipts are out there. You can see it all over Twitter. You can see it on Mastodon, it's everywhere. So check it out if you want to. But 
the merge requests now say the source project has been removed the account just says the user has been blocked i ain't gonna sit here and say i agree with everything the guy says he's had some pretty out there takes in the past based on my research that i did but that's kind of silencing someone you know i see that as a problem because at the end of the day we need alternatives i mean whether you love x11 or hate it no single company should be able to shut down a project because it doesn't fit their vision especially if they're following the license agreement you know what i'm saying and look i'm in the middle of working on an updated release of my own xfce based distro which is built on rocky linux which is a one-to-one -one rebuild of rail and guess what x11 or x server x display that's all gone i mean they removed it from the latest upstream repo for rocky 10 and that's when it really hit me this shift away from x11 is not just a debate anymore it's happening right now so maybe you're thinking but josh Wayland is newer is faster it supports hdr and adaptive sync isn't that the future and sure yeah if you're a gamer in your 20s with perfect eyesight and dual monitors, Wayland is the way to go. But let's not ignore some hard facts here. X11 still outperforms Wayland in accessibility. And you guys know that I talk about reviving older computers, older desktops, or going on Craigslist, getting some older computers, older systems, and reviving them, as well as taking that old laptop that you guys sitting around and had Windows 7 on it and reviving it using XFCE or Mate. They still rely on X11. And also keyboard centric power users still prefer X11. And many accessibility tools flat out don't work under Wayland. So if you care about, let's say, disabled users, low spec systems, or even just the freedom to choose, we should not be forcing this choice like it's a done deal. Look, this situation with X Libre, Red Hat, and XOR Purge, it's not just about display servers, it's about control and who gets to contribute, who gets to decide what's acceptable, who gets silenced when they disagree. I'm not here to defend anyone's bad takes, but I'm here to say that open source dies when we let corporate influence, personal politics, or gatekeeping dictate who gets to improve the tools we all love and use. And when someone forks a project, whether it's for the right or wrong reasons, the solution shouldn't be deletion or censorship. It should be discussion, testing, alternative paths. That's how open source is supposed to work. Now, we don't have to agree on everything and we probably never will, but I think most of us in the Linux and free and open source community can agree on this. Code is greater than ego. Freedom is greater than favoritism. Transparency is greater than politics. If we keep pushing people out based on what we believe, or worse, what someone else thinks they believe, then we're not building a better ecosystem. We're just building a new walled garden and calling it open source. So let's not do that. All right, guys, so that's it for today. That's my take. This whole X Libre versus X Org versus Wayland situation is super messy, is political, is bigger than just graphics stack. But here's what I want y'all to think about. Should open source be a space where anyone can contribute regardless of their beliefs? Also, is it okay for large organizations to erase forks just because they don't like where they're going? And are we really okay with letting politics from either side dictate what gets built and maintained? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's have a real conversation. Make sure it's respectful, open, and honest. And if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel, and share this with someone who needs to hear it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, 
But think about this, the time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills, it opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what, you belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.